Hello everyone, Lawrence Fleming here. The weather has finally turned back to normal. I'm out here with no jacket, no hat, no gloves. We're still dealing with the fact that the internet is not very good, but that's the way it is. Resident ranger here from the visitor center just making her last rounds as everybody's getting ready to turn in. There's still a few people here at the visitor center. They're doing their best to try to get internet like I'm doing, I think. But there's nothing we can do about it, but just be patient. Okay, I hope you like my last video. Let me get my power is also in short supply, so I have my battery here to make sure that my phone continues charging. My car is old. It's a 2008 and the USB is designed for the phones of the era and it doesn't put out enough power to charge my new phone while I'm doing anything with it. If it's just sitting in idle and doing nothing at a charge, if I've got my navigator on, it drains the battery. So, Okay, so we've been talking about faith and love, and it talks about being... Uh, pine cone just dropped to the ground next to me. To be good to neighbors, to our neighbors. So who are our neighbors? Well, essentially, if I had a diagram, if I had a whiteboard or something, I'd put a little dot in the middle, and that would be us. And then the first ring would be our fellow Christians, and perhaps Jews can be added to that. We're all part of the same family. And you draw another ring around that, and that would be, you know, perhaps our real neighbors. If you live in a, a house, you're going to have neighbors around you. Or an apartment, you're going to have other people living in the complex. It's getting sad that in some, some cities like New York and other places, that people don't even know their neighbors that they've lived next to for you know, 20 years. But those are our neighbors too. But then now draw another circle outside that. It would be the people that you work with, people you meet every day, people you meet in the market. They each have a connection to you, but there's something that you have to have a connection with them. You're to treat them with love and respect. And then finally, the outermost ring is going to be pretty much everybody else in the world. Everybody is our neighbor. There's no excuse. Your enemy is your neighbor. We're supposed to be good to our enemies, the Bible tells us. I think I mentioned that in my love video. There's no excuse for not showing the love of God because you show it to somebody who doesn't like you and they can't figure it out. There's no excuse. There's no earthly excuse why you should still be nice to them and yet you are. That may open them up to be inquisitive about who God is. So give that a, give that a shot. Okay, well I'm going to look at some verses here. I'm going to turn to, and the wind is blowing a bit, so i got to watch where I turn the pages. Romans 13, 8. Okay. Owe no one anything except to love one another. Neither a borrower or a lender be, is what it says. If somebody, I'm not, this is getting off topic, but if somebody needs money, you give it to them. You don't loan it. Because then they're obligated. They become a slave, and that's not good. So if you can afford it, give it to them. If you can't, tell them to find someone else. But don't loan. And there are people who loan money for business. That's not good. For he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. Jesus himself said that if you love God with all your mind, soul, heart, and spirit, that that's the first commandment. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. And so that's what we're doing is talking about who our neighbor is. Now it goes through the commandments. You know, you should not commit adultery. You shall not murder. 
doesn't say you can't kill. It says you shall not murder. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet anything. It says you shouldn't covet your neighbor's property or wife, but basically we just discussed that basically everybody on this planet is our neighbor to a degree, so just do not covet. So it all sums up saying that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love not does, does not do harm to your neighbor. So love is the fulfillment of law. It's pretty simple. God doesn't make things terribly complicated. We make it complicated when we try to find exclusions. Well, maybe I don't have to love this person. You may not like the person, but you're to love them. That's the difference. Okay, I'm going to come back to Luke, but we're going to go to Proverbs. Now here's the way you should be doing this. If your neighbor comes to you, and again, we've discussed who neighbors are. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back tomorrow and I will give it to you, whatever you need. When you have it with you now. Don't put them off. Do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strike a man without cause if, if he has done you no harm. Again, be nice to everyone. So that's coming out of Proverbs. Wisdom. Let's turn to Galatians. There's three chapters here. I don't know if we'll get to all of them. I'm going to just start in uh, 6, 6.1. 6 Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Bear one another's burdens, and so fill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. A lot of people like that. They're all in government, I think. Elite, let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. And do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. So, again, telling you how to behave. And I have Galatians 3.28. Let's see what I had over here. Okay. Again, the world is our, our working place for spreading love. I'm going to start back in 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized in Christ, you have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female. You are all one in Christ. So as Christians, everybody, not only our neighbor, but our, our kin, our, we've been adopted into this big family. Okay? So now I'm going to turn to John 14, 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It says anything. Now, what if you ask for something that's not good. Well, sometimes God will answer that to prove to us it's not good. He may try to talk you out of it, but then he may let you have it just to prove to you that it's it's really not good for you. If I got a bug on my eye. 
Okay, and now the the main verse of who our neighbor is. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up, and this is uh, Luke 10, 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit the eternal life? And this is just a little side part of it, but it gets into it. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life, eternal life. And he said to him, what is it written in the law? What is it you're reading? And I read this before in one of my last videos. So he answered him and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your strength and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But now what does that really mean? But he wanted to justify himself and said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? So there's the big question from this video. Who is your neighbor? I've talked about it, but we're going to get it right from Jesus. And then Jesus answered him, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing um, to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him and departed leaving him half dead. Now this was a Jewish man who was overtaken and beaten up and he was in need. Now by chance a certain priest came down the road and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. He saw the man in trouble and he crossed the road to the other side so he wouldn't have to deal with him. A priest. Now this is kind of a parable but it's quite plausible. plausible. He passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite. Well, that's the priestly family. So it's basically the same kind of a person. When he arrived at that place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan. Uh, those are people that they didn't like. They were Jews too, but they went to the northern country. And they were kind of the hillbilly rednecks of the area, if you will. And he came by. He came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. The other two didn't. So when he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, and brought him to the inn, and took care of him. The other two didn't do that. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I, when I come back, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And so the lawyer said to him, the one that we saw in the beginning, he who showed mercy on him. Well, that's the answer. And then Jesus says, go and do likewise. So we are to look to people. We're to try to help as many as we can in Jesus' name. No exception. You know, we've got people in need around the world, and there's going to be people that are going to be needing help, and they're not going to be Christians. Now, take care of Christians, but if you can take care of anybody else, you do that too. And it might give you an opportunity to talk to them, to witness. There are people that have made it their life to take care of people. Medical professionals, nurses are the jewel of humanity because they take care of people and they don't make enough money. Doctors, on the other hand, sometimes they have to pay off their third and fourth house, but nurses don't do that. Now, some doctors volunteer their time and they, you know, take care of kids from other countries that come here and they have cleft mouths and tongues and all kinds of things that are wrong with them and they fix them. Those are good doctors. They may have a regular practice, but they find time to, to help those that have no way of paying for this on their own, period. That's the kind of people that we need more of. 
There's a little bit of activity here. I wonder if they're getting ready to... Last couple of nights they set up a telescope. All of our planets were visible in the night sky. I think it was last night. They may still be there tonight. It'd be interesting to see if we can find more. Okay, well, I got to finish getting my video for the morning uploaded. It's literally taking all day. Last night I was in here about 8 o'clock with yesterday's video. And it got to 99%, 15%, 14%. Then a car pulled in who apparently started using the internet. And then from 13% to zero took 15 minutes. It's 13 seconds left. It took 15 minutes. The internet here is really bad. I'm not going to upload this one now because I've already, I'm have already. i in the process of uploading tomorrow's. This is the next day. I'm trying to get ahead. If it's going to take a day to do this, I'm going to try to do it a day ahead of time. Uh, and pray for me. I'm trying to find where I'm supposed to go next. I'm asking God, but I mean, I'm not getting a definite out of that. But I am getting a definite when I search parks, looking for a place to stay. Florida is full. Go home. I tried finding places in Florida, and I can find a day here or two days there, um, but nothing more than that in all of Florida. Now, there may be something out there that you know of, and anecdotally you can tell me, well, I went to this park and there was 500 sites and they welcomed me with open arms. Well, that site's probably damaged from the hurricane, and so that's why I can't find it. Anyhow, it looks like after my next little Florida trip, I'm going to be coming back to Georgia for the cold. My original campsite that I always go to, it's still there with plenty of spots. And I'm not going to tell you who it, and where it is. If I tell you where it's at, it'll fill up, and then I won't have a spot. I don't want to just head west yet. I'm still waiting for my son to let me know when he's coming back. So far, he's extended his stay again. And thank you for all those that have contributed to his fundraiser. He is doing a great job there with, uh, with that. He's getting them new English books so they can study. They're trying to learn English, and he's teaching them. And they only had like one or two books. So he's getting that for them. Uh, it's helping them to you know, have a meal. A lot of them only get one meal a day, so when he brings kids in, that's helpful. So that's what he likes to do, and he's helping there. And he really doesn't want to come home, but I can't. He's got his, he's got his 90 day time frame coming up sometime next month. And then he'd love to go right back again, but it's got to be 90 days there, 90 days here. He's trying to get them set up so that at the church they can have Wi Fi and internet, so maybe he can do a uh, Wi-Fi class from here when he gets back, so we're working on that. Okay, I'm going to continue to do my videos here in this park until the second. I'm staying until after New Year's, and then I go to my next park for five days, and after that, I don't know. Have God give me some instruction. Not to you. Have God give me some instruction. And here, find the best place for me. And if I go to South Florida, and my son comes back, he comes into Fort Lauderdale, I guess. That's the Miami area. That's where he lands, and then he flies from there to Atlanta. I could pick him up there. That would be okay. But there's no place down there. Everglades Park, Biscayne, they're all full. Now, I can do some primitive camping, but I don't really want to do that. I'm comfortable with all the toys I've got with me that I've had all along. My coffee maker, I've got to have my coffee maker in the morning. So I need electricity. Now I have, I do primitive camp, but like, you know, one week out of every two or three months I make primitive camp. But I'd rather have electricity. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. You guys, I'm going to put some video from the swamp that we were in today. We went out on a boat, so look at that at the end. Just keep hanging on while we're, while we're anxiously waiting. Until we meet in the clouds. God bless. There's a squirrel.
Beside you. Oh, I know that's an awesome tree. It's all the swirls. There's a little blue heron over there, too. Look, 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 behind behind it. It. We're going in the forest. Batter's behind now, Lydia. I'm just going to kind of try and hold the boat in place, so I'm, I'll turn the motor on. But if people want to go up, you can go up, get that aerial view. Guys, <laughs> And if the gator moves, just come back in the boat. <laughs> it can be really scary because they're really fast, but they. Still just swim away. Do you see that? Yeah. Those birds almost didn't exist by the late 1800s because people hunted them. Do you know? Do you know what they were hunting those birds for? Feathers for what? Yeah. But okay, if you came in summer, there'd be a alligator. I said birds. I want to see. Birds. I think we'll find an alligator today. Birds. Good. Right answer. <laughs> we got birds. Birds. You like birds? Okay, good. You know, turtles. Turtles. I not like I'd be surprised if we saw one. Doubles, right in the bottom of the pads. Maybe she'll be there when we come back. When the sun comes out, y'all lucked out today because for the past couple days we haven't seen any gators, but yeah. because it's so cold, they don't like people. Right. But now that the sun's